Am I reading this correctly that a prospect at the NFL Combine had a 1.6% body fat? I mean, if someone walked into my doctor's office and I knew that they had a 1.6% body fat, I would get really concerned for their long-term health and well-being. What's up everybody, my name is Brian and for those new, I'm a doctor and a sports fan and it's my goal on this page to take a look at different sports injuries and sports medicine topics to help explain them to you in a way that's easier to learn from and hopefully understand. Today I'm gonna to talk about the absolutely ridiculous 1.6% percent body fat that supposedly DK Metcalf tested with at the NFL Combine. I know it's not the typical sports injury that we review here, but this is such an interesting and wild topic that I can't not take a look at it and help teach you guys about what's going on. So what we're going to do is first explain how they do this body fat testing and then what implications this has, if any, on his long-term playing career and his health. Is it healthy to be that low of percent body fat? And just to give you a brief spoiler here, not really. To start off with how they measure body fat. The NFL uses something called a bod pod. It's this big egg-shaped container that you go sit inside and it tells you, among other things, your body fat percentage. If we think in general, the body can be composed of either fat tissue or non-fat tissue. A lot of really smart people a long time ago figured out that if we knew the density of the body, we can break it down to figure out the exact percent body fat because we know that Fat has a different density than non-fat. If we think way back to our high school physics class, you might remember that density is calculated by mass divided by volume. And so it's pretty easy, of course, to measure a mass. We can just put someone on a scale. But volume is the tricky part. Now, a while back, they used to measure volume by having a player sit in a big tub filled to the top with water. Imagine getting in a filled bathtub that's all the way at the top. Some of that water overflows, and so they'd measure the amount of the water that overflowed and that was a characteristic of the volume that was displaced by the body. Now what the bod pod does is it instead looks at the amount of air volume that's changed inside that container whenever someone gets inside of it and it relies on some pretty nifty physics laws relating pressure and volume to one another to help understand what the actual volume supposedly of that person is inside the container. Once we have the mass and the volume, we can figure out the density and then use these other formulas to determine the percent body fat. So next, like. A lot of people have asked, is that healthy? And to give you the brief answer, if it really is that low, no, it's not healthy. And I'm gonna to explain to you why. The American College of Sports Medicine made recommendations that around 10 to 22% is the ideal body fat percentage for a generally healthy male. A lot of your athletes are gonna have lower body fat percentages kind of in the low teens. And then your bodybuilders are gonna be getting down to the single digits like in that four, five, six percent range. For comparison's sake to other college-wide receivers, one study looked at around 75 Division I college-wide receivers and found that their average percent body fat was 14%, so nearly seven times as high as DK's. People wonder, is the machine accurate? Could the machine be wrong? And while certainly there are some small things that can affect the accuracy of that machine, they're pretty reliable from studies before, and so it's accepted to be a pretty good measurement that's really not gonna be too far off, and at least not enough to explain it being so drastically low. In general, yes, fat is bad, and we don't wanna have a bunch of fat on our bodies, we want it replaced by muscle, but we can't forget that fat plays a really important role in a number of different processes within our body. Fat helps supply different energy stores, it's involved with vitamin breakdown and producing hormones, it even helps provide cushion and support to our internal organs. So you might imagine that if you don't have enough fat in your body, you could have all of these long-term implications of the rest of your normal physiology being all out of whack. One particular study followed a group of bodybuilders over the span of 12 months and made a bunch of different measurements to see how their body composition and physiology changed with having such a low body weight. In that group, they were still in the 4% of body fat, so still like twice as high as Metcalf's was. And they understandably found a lot of negative outcomes in association with this low body fat. When the athletes tested their strength, like one rep max on bench press and squat, it was lower. They had a lot more fatigue and decreased energy because while your body initially uses carbohydrate type stores for energy, it eventually has to rely on fat stores to produce more energy whenever you're exercising or moving. So sure, he might be able to run a 40 yard dash really quick, but if you're trying to play an entire football game with hardly any body fat on you over the course of a season, over a week, whatever, 
you're gonna become more fatigued. The bodybuilders also saw decrease in their testosterone because we know that fat is involved with testosterone production and synthesis. They had increases in their cortisol level, which you might know is one of our stress hormones that whenever it's elevated, it can affect our blood pressure and have all these other negative outcomes, even on things like our immune system. And they even scored higher on mood disturbance questionnaires, probably because of the fatigue and lack of energy they were having, from having such little body fat reserves. Also certain vitamins that we eat have to be dissolved in our body with the help of fats and so you can infer that if you have low body fat you're probably not eating much fat and so you aren't going to have as much of those fat soluble vitamins which can then cause vitamin deficiency and even more problems. So while certainly in the short term if this really was just over the course of trying to get down for the combine it's hard to say what exactly might be the effects but I'm sure he's feeling some effects of having such a low body weight, and I'm also sure that the physicians out there on whatever team that are going to draft him are not going to want him playing a football season with that low of body fat. It's just not healthy. There's no reason to be that low, and it can have all kinds of bad outcomes down the road. So it's important for you to understand too, while we try to get our body fat down, you don't want it to get so low that you throw your body's natural processes all out of whack. There's really no additional benefit from being down in those single digits. And so even if you're in double digits at like 10 to 15%, that's still great, that's phenomenal. Don't go out there and try to get down to a single digit body fat just because you think you need to hit some number. So if that number is in fact accurate from the combine, which it probably roughly is, hopefully that's gonna change and before he actually starts playing, he'll get his body fat back up to an actual healthy percentage to not have all these other effects down the road. That's it for the video, everybody. I hope you enjoyed learning something a little bit different than our typical sports injury topics. As always, leave any questions below. Let me know ideas for future videos, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.